Hello, I'm Dr. Dina Stacer, and I have been teaching parents how to resolve their high conflict and child custody co-parenting situation since 1997 through the court system in San Diego County. I have online co-parenting courses and I have live co-parenting courses in San Diego. And I want to help parents understand that if you are having any difficulty whatsoever with sharing the children with another parent who to you seems difficult but the courts keep thinking hey you guys better get along then you're in the right place. So I call it cooperative co-parenting and conflictual co-parenting. So let's get started and let me explain to you what co-parenting is and what it's not. Cooperative co-parenting versus conflictual co-parenting is a difference in mindset. The mindset of the courts is that all parents need to co-parent for the sake of the children. And if you could, you would, right? Counselors recommend it, judges order it, family members and friends tell you that you need to learn to get along. You need to learn to work together. After all, you loved each other once, right? And in high conflict situations, there may have been a short term relationship. A child or two came from that relationship. People tried to make it work, but it may not have been a loving relationship from the very beginning. And it could have been an emotionally abusive or physically abusive relationship. It could have been a controlling relationship. It could have been a one night stand. There are all sorts of variations between people. You do not have to be a husband and wife. You can also have a female, female or a male, male relationship where there are children from that relationship and high conflict can still exist. The conflict issues are still the same. We all know that ideally we'd love to learn to work with the parents together. I mean, if you could, you would, wouldn't you? But what if you can't? So I'm going to briefly discuss that in this video. The difference between cooperative co-parenting and conflictual co-parenting. And hopefully that will help you start making changes in the way you view what you need to do to settle your case down. Ideally, if we were cooperatively co-parenting, the parents would be willing and able to work together or to agree with each other about the general child sharing issues which occur when raising your children. And ideally, it would mean that both parents believe that the other parent is important in the children's life. Ideally, if issues come up, which they do in a co-parenting way, the two parents could work together as much as possible to agree on schooling, bedtime, homework, medication, clothing issues, and activities. When you look on the internet, when you look in the dictionary, when you talk to professionals who are experts in trying to help you co-parent, judges, professionals in any kind of mental health field, attorneys, parent educators, you name it, they all have difficulty creating a definition for what cooperative co-parenting is. And so I finally said, you know what, if no one else is going to do this, I am. So first of all, for cooperative co-parenting, you need to understand that it's a mindset. And it's the same mindset for both parents. Both parents believe that the other parent has the best interests of the children at heart people in my life class, many times I'll say to them, okay, let's define cooperative co-parenting. And they'll give me some definition like both parents work together for the best interest of the kid. But it's really more than that. It's first of all, understanding that there is a very clear mindset with the parents that can cooperate. And that is both parents believe that the other parent has the best interest of the children at heart. So raise your hand if you know that the other parent believes you have the best interest of the children at heart. And raise your hand if you believe the other parent believes you have the best interest of the children at heart. If you did not raise your hand on one of those two, then you probably don't fit the cooperative co-parenting definition. Both parents believe that the other parent is valuable, worthwhile, and important in the children's life. Both parents believe that the children need to have a relationship with both parents and they actively support that relationship. 
Again, raise your hand if you believe the other parent's valuable, worthwhile, and important in the children's life. Raise your hand if you believe they believe you are valuable, worthwhile, and important in the children's life. Both parents believe that the children need to have a relationship with both parents and they'll actively support that relationship. Do you? Or does the other parent actively support your relationship with the children? If you're a cooperative co-parent couple, then that's true. Now, although the parents may have disagreements, because all parents do, with each other about the issues that need to be resolved, I think we should do it this way, no, I, th I think you should do it this way, they both are willing and able to put their differences aside to work together, even if it's difficult, in order to reach some kind of parenting decision and even if it's parenting by default. And what I mean by that is often you might have one parent that says, okay, we're going to do this, this, and this, and this. And the other parent goes, okay, that's fine. That's parenting by default. We don't have to have a lengthy discussion about it because there's a basic trust between the parents that the other parent is doing their best for the kids. The other parent's important in the kid's life. If you don't have the criteria that fit in cooperative co-parenting, no wonder you're having difficulty. The question is, will you ever? Or if the other parent doesn't have that mindset about your relationship with the children, that you're important in the kid's life, or you believe that about the other parent, you are going to have a conflictual co-parenting relationship and you need a different set of rules and understanding to work by. I am not going to be able to correct or change your mindset about the other parent. It's more about learning to do things differently and focusing on what you do have control over and power over rather than trying to fit you into a round peg into a square hole. So cooperative co-parents will make a decision together, even if it's by default, and then they'll go about actively supporting the decision that they made and the relationship they have about the decision with each other. And then both parents will do whatever it takes to support the other parent's relationship with the children. Of course they have disagreements, but ultimately both of them are willing to put their differences aside. They trust the other parent knows and, is, and believes that the, that parent is valuable and worthwhile. And it's just not a big deal. Now, if you're having difficulty with these five criteria, because you're saying, well, you know what, I have all those things, but the other parent doesn't, or I'm not willing anymore to work with the other parent, then we need to define the conflictual co-parenting definition. That is a different mindset. So what is the definition for conflictual co-parenting? Well, as I mentioned a second ago, it is a different mindset for one or both of the parents. Because when I start talking about the same definition in the live classes, what I find is that now we have parents raising their hand almost with every one of these criteria. One or both of the parents believe that the other parent does not have the best interests of the children at heart as their primary focus. Now this is a very common one. Parents arguing with each other about the fact that one of the parent isn't doing what they think is best for the kids. But when it gets down to really making decisions about schooling and getting homework done and what your rules are in your home, there's a big difference. There's a big discrepancy. You move into a new relationship. You're not happy about the partner that the other parent selected. You don't like the way they discipline or maybe they're you know, what they bring into the world. There are other ones when a uh, father has remarried or a mother has remarried and the parent, the step parent steps in trying to overstep their bounds. They don't know what the rules are about step families, etc., which are very complicated. And kids rebel and they go back and they complain to the other parent. The minute you split up and you create new homes, there was already a gap before, but the gap gets wider with new rules, new memories, new people, new traditions, etc. So trying to get things back in track is very difficult, especially if you have one parent or both that believe the other parent's 
doesn't have the best interest of the children at heart. Now, here's the one that everybody raises their hand on. I always laugh because I know it's coming. So one or both of the parents believes that the other parent has fundamental character flaws, parental deficiencies, a personality disorder, a substance abuse issue, or is in detrimental in some way which interferes with their ability to parent the children. Are your hands raised? If they are, then you fit in the conflictual co-parenting definition. One or both of the parents believes that the other parent is detrimental to the children. One or both believes that the other parent should not have an active, supportive relationship with the children because it is or will damage them. This is where we start knowing that there's a huge difference in mindset. If you believe or the other parent believes or you both believe that the other parent is flawed, they're dangerous for the children, they're damaging to the children, they're doing things that are irresponsible, impulsive, um, inappropriate, etc. There is going to be a huge gap between the ability of you being able to sit down with the other parent and reach an agreement. And even if they tell you they will, follow through may not exist for that particular parent or for you. This is why we have to have different rules. Now, in my online co-parenting courses, I teach parents what those rules are and how you have to think differently, how you have to behave differently, how you need to parent to the hundredth or millionth power in order to make sure your children do turn out okay if you've got one of the parents that may not have the ability, the skills, the mindset, the factors that require a parent to be to the highest level. And the good news is it only takes one parent to help children turn out okay. So you can relax and stop fretting that if you're both not working together, your kids will be messed up. Here's the next thing that happens is that when in a co-parenting situation, parents are trying and trying and trying as hard as they can to get the other parent to work with them, one of them finally goes to court seeking the assistance of the court professionals to help them with their child sharing decisions. Unfortunately, however, because the courts are not designed to really help you with all the issues that go on with child sharing custody issues, then um, all sorts of people get involved in your life and strangers start making decisions. People who don't have time to figure out what's best for your children. People who don't have the skills necessarily to understand all the dynamics that are interacting and interfering with the ability for parents to work together. So what happens then is that you might get a court order about how you're supposed to child share, but one of the parents may actively undermine the court order, not follow the rules, badmouth the professionals, or you as a parent. And sometimes getting into court can make things worse. Now, hopefully, you've got a really good professional or several professionals that can help you with the court system. That's why this class is in place, to help you understand what the courts do expect from you, how to get out of the court as fast as you can, because what they expect may not be what you actually have, and you need to learn the skills that you implement on your time with your children in your way without relying or expecting the courts to ever be able to give you the magic that you think originally you were going to get through the system. And last, one or both of the parents undermines the other parent's relationship with the children. And they also believe that they need to protect the children from you or the other, you believe from the other parent by either taking the time away from the children or getting the courts to determine that you or you, in this case, may try to get the other parent to be seen as unfit by the professionals. Now, that's a bad thing in many ways. First of all, nobody in the court system wants to believe that a parent shouldn't have a right to be with their children. That parent has to prove that they are defective by doing things that that are documentable. If you're trying to convince the professionals in the court that the other parent is dangerous, you don't have anything to prove it by. Um, if there's been an emotionally abusive relationship, those are tough. 
And I have found that when there's been an emotionally abusive relationship, oftentimes people don't know how to articulate that up front. And so the thing gets set in concrete and everybody's pushing everybody to get along and work together. When every single time you hear their voice or see their face, you spin for three days. It's really hard to be good for your kids when it's lights on no one's home for the children. So you got to understand that cooperative co-parenting is very, very, very different than conflictual co-parenting. You need a different set of rules if you fit the criteria for conflictual co-parenting. My online courses will teach you many, many, many strategies on what the mindset is, how to let go of what's what you can't prove, how to let go of what's wasting your life energy. If you're spending your energy trying to get the other parent to change, get better, trying to prove the court system to the court system that your ex is a knucklehead or irresponsible, good luck. Those are tough. That's thousands of dollars down the drain. You got to understand that you alone have the power to change what you do with your children and for your children. So take one of my classes. I have a variety of different classes online. The price you pay for an attorney, the price you pay for the amount of energy and cost to go to court, whether you do it yourself or you hire professionals, whether you have plenty of money that you go burn in the court system or you're trying to to manage it yourself, you're still life energy focused on the fight, not your children. I have other videos that we talk about how to do parallel parenting. I call it mom's world, dad's world. How to string pearls with your children and how to let go of the other parent and the fight. It is not easy to get out of the court system. It is not easy to change the way you're handling your conflict. But if you don't change it, you aren't good for your kids. And if the other parent truly has some deficiencies, if they are difficult, if they're unwilling and unable to work with you, if they're very focused on the fight, you have to be the one to let it go. So you need to learn how to work with a conflictual co-parent if you're ever going to get on with your life. Get out of the system and make sure your kids turn out okay. If you have to learn new strategies to end the conflict with the other parent and then redirect that energy you've been using for fighting to staying connected with your children. You can take parenting courses to help you with these co-parenting issues and learn how to work with a difficult co-parent at www.parentsinconflict.com forward slash courses. And if you have any questions, contact me at doc at dinastacer.com or call me at 800-980-0434. And thank you for your time and I wish you the best of luck with your situation.